So we are going to get started. Thank you for coming to our first Google Sites training for Webridge Township um, for this week. And we're just going to give you a quick introduction about the people that are going to be helping you through creating your Google site. My name is Danielle. I work at Oak Tree Road School 29. Been there for about nine years, started in elementary technology, and now um, are teaching my own third grade class. Amanda? Hi, I'm Amanda. I teach kindergarten over at Oak Tree Road as well. I've been with the district for about four years now. Kyle's going to be helping out a little bit as well. Hey, Kyle. <laughs> Hello, Kyle Reed. Sorry, I didn't know if I was muted or not. Um, I'm an elementary computer teacher. Um, I also help the district with, I guess, a bunch of trainings. Um, I've been teaching for about 15 years. So if you have any questions, please ask. We're here to help. I um, also set the group chat, make sure we so if you want to post any questions, you can post them there, and that'll help us answer them too. Awesome, thank you. Okay. Monica? Hi, I'm Monica Sepulafamina. Um, I teach at Oak Tree Road School 29 as well. I've been teaching for 10 years in the district. Um, I love technology and just helping out with some training. So thank you for coming today. Awesome, just a quick couple housekeeping rules. Um, just please make sure to keep yourself muted, which it seems like many of you are doing. It helps on the background noise. Um, you can raise your hands if you have any questions. A lot of what we're going to suggest is just throwing any comments or questions that you have into the chat below. Um, one of us will be moderating that at all times just to kind of work us through. This is the slideshow that we will be sharing with you. So Amanda's gonna get us started. We're gonna make sure to share this with you um, in the very beginning in the chat. So keep an eye out for that. So you'll have access to all of these slides and everything that we talk about today so that you can go on your own and do that. And the biggest slide just to kind of introduce you to is this slide. Just know that you'll have access to this slide, which is going to tell you what you are, your different sites are gonna look like in the long run. You'll have templates of what my site, Amanda, Kyle, and Monica's Google site looks like, and you'll have access to the professional development sites for each level. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to make Amanda Kuhn's host, and she's going to share her screen and get us started. You should be able to just... Yeah, sorry, we just have some people coming on in. Oh, yes, I didn't do that, sorry. Perfect, I think everyone is in now. Thank you. Okay. So hi everyone, this is how you're going to access getting into your Google site. So the first thing you want to do is go to google.com and then make sure that you're logged in under your WTSD account right here. So you'll see a picture if you've put it, you'll see your initials possibly, and then another way you can check is by clicking the waffle and then seeing if your account is set up. If you haven't logged in just yet, what you'll want to do is log in with your first name, period, last name at WTSDNJ.com, and then your email and your Google will be the same password. So then you'll want to click the waffle, and then here in your Google Suite tools, you'll see a bunch of different icons. Mine is up here in this blue square. I'll click the sites, and that will bring you on over to the main page of Google Sites. Another way that you could do it is by going to your drive, so typing in google.com, hitting that waffle, and going over to your drive. And then what you'll do is go on over to the new and then hit more. And then this will bring you to Google Sites. Now this will bring you to a brand new Google Site web page. If you want to get out of that, just like all of our other Google tools, go up to the left-hand column, click the icon, and it'll bring you right back to our main page. So you'll see here that you have all of your different, your recent sites, and then up here will be your templates. So you have a blank one, a class one, club, student portfolio, and then portfolio. And then, so let's get started. If you want to hit that blank page, it'll bring you up to a brand new website. And then the first thing that you're going to want to do is to name your site. 
So you'll go up in the left hand corner, name it whatever you want. We've already kind of got a name on it so far. And then it will automatically name your, your site up here. Then once you do that, you have access to all of these different features over here. So say that I were to type my heading, I would say teacher. And I was like, whoops, I don't want that. I'd hit that undo arrow and it would take it away or I could hit that redo and it would bring it back. And then the next thing would be to preview it. This is an awesome feature about the Google Sites because you can see the different ways that our students would be viewing it. So we have it as a laptop view, a tablet or an iPad view, and then a phone view. So that little template would get you, or that little button would get you to view all the different ways that your website will be viewed. And then the next one would be a link. So what you would do here is copy the link once it's all done and published, and you can post it on your school wireless for now, your class dojo, your remind app, that way your parents can click the link and head on over to it. And then the next one would be to how you can share it with others. Now here you're gonna see published, anyone can find and view. This is the one you're going to want to click, so that way everyone can see it with or without the WTSD login. And then our next one is our settings. Now I haven't really touched many of the settings, but this would be kind of where you see your navigation, brand images, viewer tools, analytics, and announcements. Oops. Sorry, we're just getting some more friends in. And then our next one would be our setting. Whoops, I'm so sorry, I just touched on that. And then, yes, so then we're gonna go on over. We have three different columns here, our insert, pages and themes. I'm gonna to touch a little bit on the themes and then Monica and Danielle will go over the other columns. So here you'll see that you have just different templates that Google has set up for you to get started if you like different visuals, different kind of settings. What I have on my website is an impression one. And I love it, you could change the different colors of it, the different backgrounds. Monica will show you how to change this little background here at the top of the page. And then you can change the font style too. And I'm obsessed with fonts, so I really like that aspect as well. But yeah, so now I'm going to have to give the host on over to Monica, and she'll show you the different pages that you can do. Should we be good to go now. All right, let me just make sure no one's in the waiting room. I don't see anybody. Oh, just kidding. Let's let some friends in. All right, we've got uh, three more people joining us right now, and then we're going to go ahead and go over our pages. So um, when we are talking about Google Sites, we will let me share my screen. Let's make sure everyone can see it. Can everybody see it? Yeah, yeah? perfect. Thank you. All right. So when we are in the um, Google Sites, what we want to do is on the Pages section, probably the easiest way for us to set it up if you're new to Google Sites is to be um, setting up your Google Site as a School Wires page. So when you're making these pages, what we suggest is the first button you could see that icon is the little house. You can set that as your welcome page. So you're going to double click to change home to welcome. And that would be your welcome page, the first page that people come to when they get to your Google site. Now, um, okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add some new pages. So in order to add pages, there's a plus sign at the bottom. You're going to click the plus sign for a new page. It's going to ask you what you want to title your new page. So maybe the next page we want to do is going to be meet the teacher. And we're going to press done and you can see that the page comes up on our column on the right, but also at the top of our page. We have a few more people joining. Okay. So after you've created your meet the teacher page, let's go ahead and create another page. Click that plus sign. We're going to create student supply list. Press done. And then I could see that meet the teacher has gone down on my list. If I don't want meet the teacher there, I will click on it and drag it above to rearrange the order of my pages. Um, next, I'm going to create an interesting 
web resources page. Press done. Same thing, I'm going to reorganize my pages just by clicking and dragging to move my pages around. Maybe I want to click on adding a subpage. You can look at the three dots on the side, they appear on each page, and you can click that to either make that the home page, which we already have our home page. You can duplicate the page to make it again, um, look at the properties, or add a subpage. If you want to add a subpage, maybe about specific websites on the interesting web resources. You can see now how the website subpage will go underneath the interesting web resources. Um, but maybe I didn't wanna do that. So I can either press the undo button that Amanda showed us before, or I can delete the page by clicking on the three dots. When you're on your welcome page, and maybe you wanna personalize it a little bit, um, maybe I'll change this title from teachers to welcome double-clicking on the text to change your text. But maybe this background image isn't really what I would like, so we're going to go ahead and look at the different header type options. So this is your header. You'll click on the header type, and you can see the four different types of header you can have. You can have text only, you can have a banner, a large banner, or a cover. I usually keep my um, website pages as a banner so that you have a fun background um, behind your text. And if you'd like to change your background picture, there's different ways to do that. You'll click on the Change Image dropdown. You can either upload from your device that you're using, or you can click on Select Image. When you click on Select Image, there are these different options at the top. You can click right from the gallery, which are preloaded images from Google that you can select from. You can type in your own image URL. You can search Google for a specific picture. You can search your albums, which mine are taking a little bit longer to load. There you go. Or you can also search in your drive. So it depends on where you would like to get that. You could search shared with me, shared drives, or recent as well. So there are many different ways that you can get your header images. I'm going to go ahead and just choose one from the preloaded gallery from Google. Once you select your image, you can see in the bottom right hand corner, it's adjusting for readability. Because if I go ahead and click the little stars in the bottom right hand corner, it's going to change it to make it a little brighter. What they do is, is they make this so a little bit darker so it's easier for people to view it. But if you don't like that, like I like everything bright, <laughs> so I would probably uncheck that just to keep it a little bit more fun. But you can do that and make that um, more personalized on your end, whatever you'd like to do. Next, what I want to um, talk about is moving on to the insert page, which would be this layout section here. So now you have, you know, the basic pages made and you have your welcome screen made, but now you need to make a layout because you're going to start adding information onto your pages. So instead of um, working from scratch and inserting your own pictures and text, uh, Google has given you um, layouts that you can use for each page. So all you have to do is just click on the layout button and it will insert into the section on your page. So you can see here that it gave you the picture option in the layout and also your heading text and regular text. Every time I go ahead and add a layout section, it creates a new section on my page. So this would be my first section, my next section, and anytime that you create your layouts, each section of the Google page has a new menu that pops up on the left-hand side. You can click section background, which will give you different color choices to show the different sections on your pages. You can also click on duplicate section. Maybe you like the template that you used or that layout section that you like, so you can just duplicate it. Or you can click the trash can to delete any sections that maybe you did not like. So layouts, I would say, is very important for um, beginners to be using on your Google site so that you don't really have to reinvent the wheel on where you want to have your pictures or your text. Definitely go ahead and use that layout button. 
Um, so now I'm going to toss it over to Danielle, who is going to talk to you a little bit more about the rest of the features on the insert column on how to personalize your Google site a little bit more. All right. Um, okay. All right, Danielle, you should be the host now. Thank you. You're welcome. Monica, you can see my screen now. Mon yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Okay, so we are going to talk a little bit more about what Amanda and Monica set up for us. One other thing we um, have actually gotten questions about, so we wanted to touch base with as well, is if we come into the Pages tab and we come to the Meets Teacher tab, Monica, you created a sub page for this, right? I did, but I deleted it. So if you'd like me to create another one, I can. Really quick, so let's say we have our subpage of certification, and we created that as a subpage, and you'll see that it kind of nests itself a little bit to the right of the Meet the Teacher. Um, some teachers were wondering, well, then how, if I want this to become an actual page again, how can I do that? And it's a very simple click and drag. So if you don't want your certifications page to be a subpage anymore, and you're like, you know what, I want this to be one of the main ones that parents or kids are going to see when they come in. All you need to do is click it and drag it to the left and you'll see where I should be. Uh -oh. Or maybe drag it out to where you want it. So just clicking and dragging it out to where you want it and then maybe putting it back in a specific order that you would want would be the best way for you to kind of play around with sub pages and bringing them back to regular pages. But for right now, we're going to delete that too. And we're going to come to our insert tab. So this insert tab gives you a lot of different options of things that you can add into your site. The place where you're going to most likely use a lot is the two by two options of things to insert up top. Text, images, embedding options, and your drive. I'm going to quickly go through the bottom of the insert tab for you, just to kind of give you a quick overview of all the specific things you can add into each page too. You can have collapsible text, you can have a table of contents which will allow your users to quickly get to specific parts of your page. You can have an image carousel. This would be great if you have a lot of um, pictures or images of your class that you want to share. You can upload all the images into, into the carousel and it will go through those images for you instead of putting them all over your page. You'll have buttons which will allow you a quick um, click into a link and I'll show you that towards the end of this. Dividers, YouTube videos, calendars, maps, so on and so forth. So these are the specific things that at one click you can add into your page at any time. The top here though is where we're going to be working and I'm going to try to show you um, and kind of bring you on a journey of creating a page right in front of you so that you can wrap your head around how that could work. So Monica showed us those layouts and if you have those layouts and that works for what you want, that's great. Another way that you can add things in is just by clicking any one of these at any time and it will create one of those sections that Monica was talking about. If you don't want that though, you can delete it or at any time I find this pretty simple that you can double click on your page and all of those options come up as well. So I'm probably going to be doing a mix of that as I go through. First thing is on the welcome page, you might particularly want to put maybe a two teacher quotes and a picture of you in your class so that when people come to your page, they see that. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to double click and I'm going to upload. Now you can put any of your information that you're going to be putting onto your site into your Google Drive and access it there. Currently, the things that I have are in my computer, so I'm going to upload them from my computer or you could take them from your site. In my computer, I go to my documents and I look to see maybe quotes that I want to put in. I take my quote and it goes right in here. I can now click and move this around. It gives me a nice grid. I can also change the size of it and play around with that as well. Maybe I also want to upload a picture of my class. So I will come into my computer again. 
let me move you guys so I can see everything. I'll come to my computer again. I'll come to my documents and maybe I'll come to my class pictures and put in a picture of my class and I as well. So I can always play with that size and work with that too. So this would be the way that you would put maybe a quote and some pictures of your class on this beginning page. Another thing that I see a lot of educators doing is putting their Twitter feed on this welcome page so that anyone that comes to your Google site can see everything that you're doing in your classroom. You would want to use the embed for that and there is a video of how to do that on the distance learning site for elementary under the Google Sites page. So if you're interested in that, we're not going to dabble in that today, but you can go there as a resource and to know how to do that. Now that I'm done with my welcome page, hypothetically, I'm going to come back to the pages and I'm going to click and come to the meet the teacher page. So the meet the teacher page is now blank and maybe I want to put my Bitmoji along with some text about myself. So there's a couple different ways to do that. I have already um, used my Bitmoji extension. So um, you can always open up your Bitmoji or download my Bitmoji extension. You can always open it up and click and drag it into the page or I've downloaded them to my computer as well. So I'm going to again, double click and I'm going to upload um, Bitmoji. Maybe this is my picture I want to put in and I'm going to open it. My Bitmoji comes right into my page and another way you can do this is through the extension. At any time, I can click insert text or I can double click on my page where I want and click the text box. Google Sites is really great that if you're double clicking on the page where you want it, it really does create a nice space for it. And it knows that I have an image on the left here and now I'm going to type all about me and I can play around with what I want my text to look like, normal, title, heading, subheading, or small. I can bold it, italicize it, change the position, use numbering bullets, insert a specific link, get rid of my formatting, or get rid of this text box at all. So here is where I would type all about me, all about me, and all about me. And this would be my Meet the Teacher page. When I'm done with my Meet the Teacher page, I would come back to my pages and come to my student supply list page. On this page, it wouldn't be anything um, too special. It would basically just be text. So maybe on this page, I might want to add text, but play around with the formatting that Monica told us about. So maybe I want to put an emphasis here and I might do 2019-2020 supply list. And then underneath, I would add more text, make sure that it's centered and put all the things that my students need there. Okay, and this will basically be a simple supply list for your students. And last but not least, I'd come to my interesting web resources page and there's a couple different things that we can add here, which is going to be helpful for our students. The first thing I'm going to show you are buttons. So if I come back to my insert tab and I scroll down, this is a nice way to put different links that go outside of your Google site onto your page. So I'm going to click to add a button. Just letting someone in, give me one second. And let's say I wanted to add the Brain Pop website. So I would type what I want my button to look like when people see it on my site. And this would be the word Brain Pop. Then I would actually type the link underneath here. You can create a button to another page in your website, or you can put it to an outside link. So right now I'm going to create my brain pop button and it creates a nice little button for me right here. I can play around with the size or I can play around with where it's going to be on my page. Maybe I create another button for IXL. And I can, now you see it created a new section for me, but if I don't want that, it's really great and customizable and I can click and move my button right to the middle of my screen here. 
but I now have a brain pop button, an IXL button for my students, and then I'll create my very last one, first in math. That's something that we use in our school. And it's going to create another section again, but I want to put it in its own section. All I need to do is click and drag, and I can play around with the size. Once I'm done with this, another thing that you can do is include YouTube videos right in your site, which is nice because YouTube is a part of Google. So if I wanted to, I would click my YouTube and I could just literally search here or copy and paste a video that I created on my own of what I want to include. Maybe I want to include a video on getting started with IXL. So I'm going to click that and it embeds in its own section really nice on this page for my students and my parents. So YouTube videos are great for being used on the site. And the last thing I wanted to show you on this page is if I wanted to include any specific document from my Google Drive. So the way I can do that is again, I can double click and it can, I can choose Drive here or I can choose to go in and open up my WTSD Google Drive over here as well. I can go right into my drive, go into shared drives, things that have recently been shared with me or things that I have recently been in in my Google Drive. As long as it's in your Google Drive, it can be put on your web page. Maybe I want to put in my keeping track of all this technology letter to my parents and it automatically embeds this document from my Google Drive right into my Google site. I just need to play around with formatting and size. And once I get it the size that I want, I can click and drag it and bring it back into this section. And now my site or the beginnings of it are complete. So once I'm happy with my site, the first big thing you want to do is come to the top. I know Amanda went through these icons with you. You wanna to come to preview and you want to make sure that you look through all of your pages and that you're happy with all of the content that you added. Now you see my quote in my picture, my Bitmoji and all about me, my supply list and my interesting web resources. Here is when you click on these, that will bring you to these specific sites outside, outside of your site. When you're done with the preview, you can see what it looks like on a phone, a tablet, a large screen. You can report a problem or click exit and come back to where you were. Um, I know that there was a person in the chat before, I think Casey was asking about how are parents going to see this. So you want to make sure before you publish for the first time, you're going to click on the share with others icon and you're going to look at where it says published. So right now, when I publish my site, anyone can find it and anyone can view it. And that is the settings that you want. So you want to make sure to click that first one. This will allow parents to see it, other educators, and really allow it to be public so that anyone can see it, not just Woodbridge Township, um, people that work in Woodbridge Township. When I'm done, anytime I make any changes, I want to click that publish site. It will show you all of the changes that you've made from formatting options to specifically different um, pages that you've added in content. Anytime you make any changes, you want to click that publish button and then it pushes it out so that your parents can see it and your students as well. So it's really going to end what we have to say. If you have any questions, feel free free to share it in the chat. This recording will be put on the elementary distance site and um, the slideshow was already and the slides were already sent to you um, in the chat as well today. Thank you for coming.